All right, guys, script training. Today is Wednesday, February 1st. Let's kick it off here. Got a good crowd today. We're going to dive into some common objections that we've been getting recently, and we're going to pick them apart and give you some of the skills that you need to uh, move your clients forward, whether it's trying to get them to move forward to an appointment, whether it's trying to get them to move forward to making an offer on a home, um, or even um, seeing a property, whatever it may be. So let's go over some objections that we are uh, getting. I asked you guys to type something in the chat and we're just gonna go down the line, guys. Um, and then before that, before we kick into the actual topics, I just wanna remind you guys of just some key strategies when you're handling objections. The, the worst thing that you can do when someone gives you an objection is to completely disagree with them. If someone says, hey, I'm not, you know, buying a property, or I don't want to move forward because uh, I might get laid off, right? If you're like, well, no, you're not going to get laid off. Your job's fine. You'll be okay. Like, you're just completely opposite of what they're saying. You are immediately going to clash with them, right? Nobody wants to do business with someone who is not on their side or on their team. Right. So the best way to handle any objection, these are just fundamentals that I want to remind you of, is to seek to understand why they are feeling that way. Right. If someone says something, it's obviously a, an issue for them. You cannot just blow over it and try to move forward with your agenda. You got to put your agenda aside and you have to seek to understand why they arrived at that conclusion. So if someone says, hey, you know, I'm, I'm worried about the economy. I don't want to, I might get laid off. And you immediately start going, well, you know, buying real estate is a great long-term investment and, you know, you should just invest anyways. And I'm sure you'll find another job. Like you sound like a jerk basically, right? Like I just told you, I'm really scared that I'm going to get laid off. And like, you're just trying to go for the sale. So the best sales people, they actually don't sell at all. They actually have in-depth conversations and they seek to understand and they help follow, they follow the logic of the person, right? This is what you're saying. This is your concern. Well, let me try to understand why you're concerned about that. Let's, let's walk through that together, right? Let's break it down. Let's unpack that. Let's peel the onion back, right? So that I can make sure I understand you and I can give you the best possible advice for your situation right now. And if that means like we, we come to a conclusion that it's not a good time for you to buy, well, then that's the best thing for you right now. If we come to a conclusion that it is still a good time to buy, and maybe there's some options that you're not seeing that maybe we can provide for you, well, then we should explore those options. But I can only, sorry, I can only make those recommendations if I understand exactly where you're coming from and how you feel. Right. Uh, give me one quick second, guys. Let that sit with you real quick. Quiet. All right, I had to close my office door because and yell at the dogs. You guys heard me barking. Poor my dog. dogs bark at anybody who passes by the front front of the house. If there's anybody walking by, they just bark for no reason. And if it's another dog, they even go crazier. Um, okay, so what I just said right now, who feels confident re-explaining that back to me in their own words? I'm gonna call on someone. I'm gonna call on someone new because I, I, I tend to get a lot of the same people that raise their hand. It's usually my more experienced guys, you know? But I wanna make sure my, my newer guys understand this because the newer guys are the ones who need this the most, right? For our senior guys, sometimes this is a, a refresher or sometimes this is just reinforcement or maybe like, oh, I forgot about that. But for my newer guys, this, com this can be completely brand new to them, right? So someone who's newer on the team, can you re-explain back to me, like in your own words, like what I just said? Again, what did that mean to you? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, Chris. Chris, I'm calling on you, bro. Um, yeah, what it means to me is like, we're here to really help people, you know, potentially make the biggest purchase of their life. It's not in our own agenda to make money, but more to 
you know, help them without, throughout that whole process. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, that's a great, great feedback, right? We are here to help, right? And here's the thing is we are here to help and helping someone doesn't always mean closing a deal. That's what I want you guys to understand. Helping someone could be giving them advice and later on the deal comes or putting them in the right path so that they can do whatever they got to do or get their situation, uh, you know, fix their situation or whatever it might be. And later on, they come back to you, right? So helping someone doesn't always mean a paycheck. That's what we need to understand first off, right? And when you do that, guys, those of you guys that are just getting started, or even those of you guys that are in your career, sometimes this is a refresher that we need to remember, is when you come from a place of service and contribution, and how can I help you leave better than before you came to me? If you do that consistently and enough times and you talk to people enough, the deals will come and the referrals will come. And you'll actually have more business than you've ever dreamed of because you are just all about helping people no matter what it is. Whether, I, whether you buy or sell, I'm here to help, right? I'm here to help give you great advice. Um, who can tell me, some of my newer guys, what does follow the logic mean? When I say follow the logic, follow the client's logic, right? When they have an objection and we want to follow their logic, what does that mean to you? Okay. Francisco, let's go. Uh, basically, we want to come from like a place of like understanding of like put ourselves in their shoes, essentially, like what are they going through? Yeah. What are they going through? Right. Uh, exactly. Right. You want to come from a place of understanding. Right. And if you are in a, a relationship with someone, following someone's logic could be the key to a happy relationship, guys. If your significant other says you're always at work and you're never home and you're like, well, I got to take money. That's all I got to do. Right. No, like, let me follow your logic. Let me understand what you're going through and how that's affecting you and maybe what we got to do to fix the situation. Right. So this stuff not only applies to sales, it's all about really what it is. It's all about relationships. Right. Is how do you build rapport with people um, by being genuine. Right. So it's not only, it's, it's just communication, you know, at, at a higher level, guys, and it's, it can apply to other areas of your life. So follow the logic and we are here to help and serve. All right, it's good. So we got, we got a good foundation here, right? And the reason why I'm, I'm stressing this, guys, is because when you understand that part of it, like follow someone's logic, we are here to help, we are here to advise, then any objection you get, you can break it down with the same exact formula, right? Um, it's universal now, <clears throat> right? Because all of those rules are gonna apply to any objection. So now let's go through the objection list. You guys gave me some lists of objections. Fear of layoffs, rates are too high. These are the things you guys are talking to people about. Market price is too high and too competitive. I'm not looking anymore. Job insecurity or recession. I'm waiting until the prices go down. So let's go down. Uh, fear of layoffs. Um, I'm going to go down the list, guys. We're going to run through these. And now we're going to use what we just talked about. We're going to use seeking to understand. We're going to use follow the logic. And then we're going to give people advice that naturally comes to us, right? Like if I was really trying to help you and I didn't care if I sold the house or not, what would I say, right? What advice would I give you, right? How can I point you in the right direction? So that's where we're going to run through using that strategy. And then I'll coach you as we go. So Diana, uh, let's, let's go with you. So I want you just to keep in mind everything we talked about and we're going to role play that. And then I'm going to give you some coaching. So Diana, you know, I just don't know if I want to make the move right now because uh, they're doing a lot of layoffs and I'm just not sure if I'm going to end up getting hit with the layoff. So I'm, I'm a little nervous about trying to buy a home right now. I hear you, Enrique. When I see the, the news articles, I also worry. I know that there's uh, quite a few of our clients who are in the tech industry, and I can only imagine if they're wondering the same. But let me ask you, have you had any layoffs this last year at your company? Um, you know what? We haven't. No. Uh, I mean, good thing for us is we haven't had any layoffs. I mean, from what they're saying, 
you know, our jobs are pretty secure, but then when I see the news and I see everything else, I'm just like, yeah, I just, I'm, I get a little worried. I hear you. I would be worried too. Well, I'll tell you from my end, from my experience, we have about 40 agents or so. I've heard about one or two having a client that got laid off. So luckily we don't see so much layoffs here close to home. Um, maybe globally. Uh, these companies are cutting back, but I can see your concern. Well, maybe we can connect and kind of get a pulse on your current situation and just see if it makes sense for you to move forward now or hold off. Do you have any news you're expecting from your company in the next couple of weeks? No, honestly, no. I mean, they're not telling us anything. It's more of just the what I'm hearing from everyone else. You're like, nothing at my company right now is indicating layoffs. Mm -hmm. you know, I've been there for for 20 years, you know? So I don't, like if they were gonna lay someone off, like they would probably lay off some of the newer guys cause I'm, I'm pretty high up. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna lay anybody off at my job, but you know, just the news, like all these other companies and that's kind of what fears me a little bit, you know? Yeah. No, I hear you hundred percent. Well, it's good that you have seniority cause they just find, you know, somebody to have the experience that you have. So hopefully that makes you feel somewhat better. Well, let's connect later on this week. Would tonight at six or tomorrow work better for you? Um, maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow in the afternoon. Okay. Well, we could run numbers and just see if it makes sense. Um, all right. Sounds good. We'll do tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. Enrique. All right. I'll look perfect. Up. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's stop right there. Good job, Diana. Um, Feedback for Diana. Uh, what was great about what Diana did is she did not sound like she was trying to sell me anything, right? And as I started talking, like I was putting myself in that buyer's shoes, really what it is was just a fear. Like my job seems pretty secure. I don't think I would get laid off if they did lay anybody off, but everything else around me, the external is really what's just kind of causing me to stress out, right? So by me just being able to talk to someone about it, I think I, I immediately felt a little bit better, right? Because I started I started saying out loud, well, they're probably not going to lay me off anyways, right? And I started selling myself. You see what I mean? So, and Diana was just the one that was just helping lead me down the line, right? Like very passively, very like, man, I completely understand. Um, you know, it makes sense why you'd be, you know, feel that way. And that's that's exactly what you want to do. Because then I know like Diana is just not trying to, to close me on a sale, right? Anybody have something to add? Um, and, and then she casually said, well, let's connect. Let's run some numbers. Let's see if it, if it even makes sense. So she kind of did the little takeaway. We're like, hey, let's see if it even makes sense. Like we don't have to decide on anything right now, but let's at least meet and run some numbers, right? What I would... Um, maybe coach you on Diana is maybe, and this is just extra, right? This is just like critique to get a little bit, a little bit better. It's just give more reassurance. Like, Hey, Enrique, you know, it sounds like you're high up there. It sounds like maybe these fears are just from what you're hearing in the news. Like, you know, I don't know your exact situation, but it sounds like you're, you're pretty secure in your job and maybe just the news is just getting to you. And, um, you know, it's important to get out of, all that drama that we hear and, and let's focus on your situation and where you're at. Right. And what we got to do to help you. Like, that's the only thing I would add is like, just like reassure them. Cause sometimes people need reassurance, right? Even though these are strangers that we're talking to, right. These are people that we, we don't really know, but people need reassurance in life. Right? People want to like feel supported by other people, even if it's from a stranger. Right. And that's how you establish a connection. Right. When I'm, where when we hang up that phone, I'm like, you know what? She seemed really nice. You know, she seemed really genuine. Like, yeah, I, I do want to meet with her. I do want to hear what, you know, what the numbers are. Right. Um, so good stuff, Diana. All right, let's go down the line. Um, rates are too high. Tony. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah. When someone says rates are too high, what is the real concern there? Um, 
I'd say, I'm not quite sure if I'm correct here, but I'd say affordability. There you go. You are correct. 100% correct. Good job. I remember when I was on a specific call and I was speaking with um, this prospect and they're like, the rates are too high. Remember when I was on training and you guys mentioned the program that can assist. So I was, you know, I'm not quite sure if I, if the way how I sounded was not up to par, but they weren't interested in that. She didn't want to hear much about that. It's just that the rates are too high, that there's nothing we can do at this time. She's just not interested. Got it. So I think we got to break that down, right? You got to you got to think a step ahead. If I say rates are too high, what I really mean mm -hmm. is I want to make sure I can afford the payments, right? I want to make mm -hmm. sure I can afford the house, right? Because really, if I can afford the payment, does it matter what the rate? If I'm like, if I buy it at a price that makes sense and I can afford the monthly payment and it's a good area um, and it meets all my needs, does it really matter what the rate is? Well, in that case, not necessarily because at the, can you hear me? At the end of the day, they can refinance when the rates are a bit feasible to them. But I guess they're a bit scared when they hear that rates are too high. It's just too much for me right now. I'd rather just wait until everything that's goes, awesome. Awesome. Okay. goes down. That's, actually, that's really great. Got it. So what I'm getting at, Tony, is, is when you say rates are too high, right? Like if it's a 5%, is that high or low? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Is 5% high or low? That sounds a bit okay for me. <laughs> But why does that sound a bit okay for you? Well, as you stated before, I guess it all comes down to what you can afford. Exactly. Then right. you're gonna say to them, "Have you, you know, have you had you have you had an opportunity to sit with um, a lender and see and see what your finances are and go over the numbers to see, you know, if this is something you can afford and see what makes the most sense." I do ask that sometimes and they're like, oh yeah, I did. Some sometimes as if, you know, it's not accurate information, but yeah, they're like, they did and it's just not something. So I'm really struggling with that part when they say that, you know, the rates are too high. Just trying to overcome that objection. It's a bit difficult right now for me. Okay, so here's what I wanna tell you guys about rates. Rates don't mean anything, guys. They don't mean anything because it's all subjective. It really depends on what you can afford. If you were to ask my parents what their interest rate was back when they bought their house, it was probably like really high, right? Like it was probably 10 or 12% or something versus someone who bought their house a couple of years ago, it was 3% versus someone who bought their house last month, it was 6% versus someone who bought their house 20 years ago, it was 18%, right? So rates where the rate is at that number if it's a five a six a ten a twelve it doesn't matter because that's all subjective right it, it really depends at the end of the day what you can afford right because the rate is just what's written down on the paper right what well, really what people pay every month they don't pay their rate they pay their, they pay their monthly payment so we need to shift focus from rates being high or where they're at because it's all comparison, right? Like if you're comparing them to last year, well, the rates are high. If you're comparing them to 20 years ago, they're really low. If you're comparing them to the history of interest rates and mortgages have been around, they're actually lower, right? So it all depends what comparison you're making, right? Um, the person who has 10 bucks in their bank account might see someone that has 50,000 in their bank account and say they're rich, right? That person with 50,000 might say they're broke because they see someone that has a million dollars in their bank account, right? So it's all subjective. That's what I want to get at, right? It's all, it really just depends at the end of the day, what makes sense for you? What can you afford? So when someone tells you the rates are too high, 
I don't want you to disagree or agree with them. I want you just to acknowledge that the rates have changed, right? Yeah, you know, the rates have definitely fluctuated. I totally understand where you're coming from. But I want you now to shift the focus to um, affordability, right? You know, hey, what I'm hearing you say is, is maybe you just want to make sure you can afford the payments. Is that is that right? You want to make sure you can get a good deal and, and afford the home you're buying, you know? And then this is why we should meet with the lender to see, you know, rates have changed, right? There's different programs out. There's different things that they can do. There's creative financing options. We really want to see what you can afford today, not six months ago, not last, not two months ago. We want to see where it's at today for your situation. That's really what you're trying to do. And let's see if it even makes sense once we look over the numbers for you. Okay, so Tony, now that you understand that a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Let's unpack that. So I want you to empathize with me. I don't want you to disagree or disagree, right? About the rates being high or low because that's all subjective. So don't play that game. Yeah, they are really high. Well, no, they're not. My parents got a 12% on their house, so they're actually low, right? So we don't want to play that game. Like, don't put yourself in that game, right? Because that's a losing game. I want you to more focus on like, yeah, you know, the rates have definitely fluctuated. And I want you to shift me to what I'm really talking about, which is affordability, all right? So Tony, um, yeah, I just don't know if I want to buy anymore. You know, the rates are just really high right now. And um, yeah, I just not sure if I want to do anything right now. Yeah, I totally understand where you're coming from. You know, the rates, they have definitely fluctuated, but here's what I think makes the most sense. I think, you know, we should just have a talk with our lender and see what makes the most sense for you. If it's a case where you should go ahead and purchase, definitely not saying you should purchase a home today or tomorrow, but I just want for you to get an understanding of what you're able to afford today rather than six months ago or a month ago. How does that sound to you? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I get it. That, that doesn't make sense. I just think they're too high, you know, and yeah, I don't, I just, I'm not sure if I should make a move right now. Okay. Well, I, once again, I get where you're coming from. There are a lot of people right now who are, you know, worried about the rates and everything like that. But it all comes down to what you can afford on a monthly basis, right? So, and also, if even if it's your, even if it's a case where you're worried about what the rate are at now, you can always refinance, and there are programs designed to assist you. So I could have a meeting with my lender for them just to explain to you, and you can figure out what makes the most sense for you. As I stated before, I'm not saying you should purchase a home today or tomorrow. We just want to see what makes the most sense for you right now and if it's a good time for you to make a move. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, okay. okay let's, wonderful. Let's stop, stop role play right there. Um, okay. Tony, what, some advice I would give you would be to like break it down a little bit more, right? I told you again, the rates are high. Mm -hmm. So I would say, hey, Enrique, I, I totally hear where you're coming from. Let me ask you a question. Are, are you concerned with the affordability of the home? Like being able to afford the monthly payments or down payments? Like what is, what is really important for you, you know, when you're talking about the interest rates, right? Like, I think if you ask a question like that, maybe remember the seeking to understand, right? So get me to talk mm -hmm. instead of you doing most of the talking by asking me a question, right? Like asking me, what do I really need? What am I, what am I really concerned with, right? Like, and help me find that answer, right? So let's try that one more time, Tony, but I want you to talk less and I want you to ask me more questions so that I can open up to you, right? Um, okay, Tony, yeah, I just don't know if I want to, I want to buy right now you know the rates just seem like they're high right now and I just don't know if it's a if it's a good time to make a move the rates just seem too high yeah so I can understand where you're coming from you know the rates have definitely fluctuated um uh, but what exactly makes the most sense for you what is it that you're concerned about as it relates to the rates are um, you worried about affordability or go ahead yeah yeah I just I mean I just want to make sure I can get a good deal and I want to make sure like I can afford, you know, like the payments and all that stuff. 
Okay, so what I'm you're just, looking for is a good deal. Yeah, I mean, you know, the best deal possible, but really I just want to make sure I, I don't get into a situation where I can't afford the payments, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, since the rates have gone up, I'm, I'm just thinking I might not be able to afford to buy something right now. Yeah, well, I totally understand where you're coming from. And here's what, this is where the lender comes in, where he, you know, sit down with you, have a talk with you, go over your finances and the numbers and see what makes the most sense for you in order to say, hey, I think this is a good move for you right now, or I think you should hold off. Okay, uh, and stop role play right there, pause. What I want you to do is I want you to go a little deeper with what I said, like, say some of my words back to back to me, right? Like if I said, I want to see if I can afford something, like use that against me, right? Hey, look at this mm -hmm. is exactly why I would recommend you meet with the lender because let's actually see what you can afford. You know, the rates have changed. They fluctuated, but new programs have come out. And when you sit with the lender, we can see what you can afford today because you just told me that affordability is, is the most important thing for you. So what I don't want you to do, Tony, is I don't want you to like dance around like what I told you. I want you to actually take what I said and really break it down for me. Does that make sense? Okay. Right? Like stay on, stay on my issue, right? Don't like go away from my issue. Don't just say, well, meet with the lender, see what your finances are and see if it makes sense. No, talk about affordability. Well, hey, let's actually see what you can afford. Have you thought about a, a payment that you can afford? Uh, what would make the most sense for you? Like un unpack it a little bit more and go a little deeper. So uh, go ahead, Tony, just, just pick up back where you left off. I just told you, yeah, affordability. I want to make sure I can afford the payments. You know, I just don't want to get into a situation where I can't afford the house. Yeah, I totally understand where you're coming from, you know? So have you actually, have you actually, <laughs> One second, I'm a bit nervous right now. I'm not sure why, but let's try again. All good, go for it. All right, so where was I? I um, uh, so yeah. I wanna make sure I can afford the payment. I just don't wanna get in a situation where I can't afford the house and the rates have you know, changed. So now I, I'm not sure if I can afford it. Okay. So yeah, the rates have definitely fluctuated, you know, and I get what you're saying. You don't want to be in a situation where you're not able to afford and afford the monthly payment and stuff like that. But have you thought about the monthly payment you can afford? Do um, you have anything in mind? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like probably no more than 4000 a month is probably what I'd be able to pay. Um, right okay. now, I think about... 3,500 for, for rent. So I could probably go a little bit higher if it's for my own house, but probably no more than that. Okay, great. So basically you're looking for, you know, a good deal. And that's what we want to help you with. So I think we can have a talk with my lender to see what is in, just not getting it. Okay, Tony. And this is this is a this is some coaching for all you guys, Tony. Um, mm -hmm. Pretend I pretend I was your your brother, right? Like, take the salesperson script off. <laughs> Don't try to sound so professional, right? Like, pretend I was your brother. What would you tell me if I was your brother? Um. Oh, if you were my brother. And I just told you, yeah, I want to buy a house, but I don't know if I can afford the payments because the rates have gone up, like. Just be real with me right, All right. Now. For example, let me put myself, let me put myself in the person's shoe. I want to purchase a property and, you know, interest rates are too high. Not quite sure if I might be able to speak, be able to afford the monthly payments and things like that. So for me. How would you help me find the answer? I'm, I'm thinking that um, sometimes we second guess ourselves and I think what you might be, what we might be able to afford now at five, six months from now or a year from now, that might be something we're not able to afford. So it's always best to catch it while you can. Um, 
figure out what is it that you need to do and uh, get educated on it so that whenever the time comes, um, you will make the right decisions and you're not rushing into anything because this would be a big transaction. It will be something that you have to live with for the rest of your life and you have to figure it out. So I would say not rush into anything, get as much information as possible, um, go over your finances with someone who's knowledgeable, learn more and see if that is something you think you are able to manage and figure out life from there. Oh, all right. Stop right That's there. Advice I take. Let's stop right there. That was great advice. Mm. That was really good advice, right? So that the way you explained it, like if you were just thinking it out loud, you were processing it right now and just talking out loud. That's how you need to talk to the people on the phone. Instead of like trying to be the Tony who is like trying to sound so professional. It's okay. Like just say, Hey, Enrique, like, I totally understand. Like if, if you were my brother, this is the advice that I would give you, you know, I would, I would, this is a big transaction. This is a big deal. You know, I would sit down with someone knowledgeable and I would go over the numbers and see if it's even something you can manage. You know, things have changed and you don't want to miss an opportunity later on, you know, because you waited. So the best thing you could do is educate yourself right now and at least see where you stand today and then see if it's something you can manage, right? And go from there, you know? And that's why I think it's important that you meet, you know, meet with one of our lenders because they can help you figure that out. That's basically what you said, right? Right, Tony? Yeah, I guess it's because a lot of us are on here. Okay. <laughs> it's nerve wracking. So, but remember, we're just, we're just people, right? We're just people having a conversation. We're all here to learn. So you're actually teaching us something right now, Tony by you talking that out. But I think there's a valuable lesson that we took away right now is that sometimes when we're on the phone, we think we're in the script mode, but, and we're not being who we really are, right? Like if you were just a stranger on the street and you know, like they just needed some advice, then you would like take off the script mode, take off the salesperson hat, and you would just be a real human to human and just give them your best advice that you thought would make sense for them right? That's, yeah. that's how you create connections. That's how you build rapport with people. Don't try to sound like a salesperson. Just be real. Like you're just talking to another human who is fearful, who is uncertain, doesn't know. They're not educated a lot of times. This is a big transaction. There's a lot of pressure, right? Just be real with people, right? Be real with people and give them advice as if you were telling your brother, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, right? So I think that's a valuable lesson, Tony, is, is just be Tony. Don't be like the Tony, the salesperson ISA. Just be Tony, the real, the girl who's like always gonna have your back, right? Like, I'm always gonna keep it real with you. I'm always gonna tell you, you know, what's gonna be my best advice. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but I'm gonna at least give you some advice and help you figure it out, right? Okay. And in order to do that, you gotta come from a place of kindness. You gotta empathize with people. You gotta acknowledge like, oh, I totally understand. Like, yeah, you're right, it is scary, right? Blanca does a great job at this. Blanca, what can you tell me? No, I think you're right. You hit it right on the button. And Tony, good job. <laughs> kudos to you just be yourself you. be genuine be yourself you don't have to have the solution always you're just guiding them to the solution you're not telling them what to do you're informing them and going over the options you're not convincing them to buy your a uh, brainstorming together as a team is it the right time to buy and i think when you come up come from a place from that angle that you're there to help and assist it'll just fall in place and they'll feel it. Hey, Tony's looking out for me. She's really making sure that I'm fully informed and that this is the right time or I'm trying to figure it out with her. Yeah. So I, I think if you do that and, and good job the way you were doing it right now and just really affirming, repeating and affirming their concern is letting them know you're listening. You're paying attention to, to what they're saying. Yeah. 
<laughs> Tony, you already have it in you. You just, I think you're just getting nervous on the spot. So then by default, you go into like the salesperson mode mm -hmm. and you're not just being Tony. You already have it in you because when yeah. I told you like, hey, pretend I'm your brother, you broke it down. And then like, that was the best answer you could have ever given someone, right? Mm -hmm. So less, less PRG salesperson who you think you should be more Tony, the person who just is here to help people and talk to them over the phone and guide them to the right direction. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Let's go. Um, okay. Market price is too high and too competitive. Dewey. Yes. yes. All right. Hopefully you've been listening, bro. Cause all this stuff you need to now, I don't want Dewey, the salesperson, bro. I want Dewey, like my homie, who's really trying to help me and give me the best advice. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not convincing me to, to do something or not do something. You're more saying, Hey, let's help you figure it out. Right. Mm -hmm. do we you know yeah thanks for calling you know i just don't know if we're gonna do anything right now it's just the market seems like it's way too competitive and you know the prices are starting to go up and i just don't know if it's if i should make a move right now yeah and ricky i i completely understand i do also see um there's some area where the price is high and there's some location where it is uh quite competitive but um i i mean in in term of location wise, um, are you only looking at that location? Um, I mean, I'm open to a couple of different locations. It just really depends, like if I can get into a, a a good deal for us, something that we can afford. Um, I'm tired of renting, you know. Right. You know, so I do want to own my own house, but I just want to make sure, I, like, I don't get into a bad situation. I want to, you know, because I've seen people who bought houses and they couldn't afford them, and all their pay. Right. All the money went towards the house payment. So I also don't want to like have no life and I'm just working to pay the mortgage, you know? Yeah, I completely understand. You're currently renting and then you're looking to purchase and owning something of your own. Um, yeah, from what I'm hearing, you you uh, ha what is your comfortable monthly mortgage? Okay, Dewey, you're sounding like a salesperson now. Uh, <laughs> I just yeah, told okay. you. I, so here's the thing. Okay. Be I just opened up my heart to you, bro. I just told you, like, I'm scared because I don't want to buy a house and not be able to afford it, uh, you know? And, like, I don't want to be like those people who just work and and all they do is pay their mortgage and they just work just to pay the mortgage and they're never home, right? So I need you to stop for a second, Dewey, and I need you to, like, really, like, connect with me, bro. Like, let me know it's going to be okay. Like, let me know you hear me, man. Let me know, like, shoot, I don't, I wouldn't want to do that either, right? Like... <laughs> Hey, I'm Ricky. I completely understand, man. If I'm in your shoes, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely have the same feeling. But let me reassure you, uh, everything will be all right. I uh, I work with real estate and I can help you get into a very good deal that you're comfortable with paying monthly. All right. That was better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Let's reset. Reset real quick. We're going to hit the reset button. Go like this. Do we hit the reset? reset. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Uh, Enrique, I... oh, hold on. Hold on. Remember, guys, sometimes we're trying to get to the finish line too fast. Remember, you want quality conversation. You don't want to like just hurry up and get the appointment because you're missing the opportunity to build the rapport and relationship with me. Right. Don't worry, Dewey. Like at the end, the appointment will come if we establish good value. So stop trying to rush to like get me to close or, or book the appointment. Instead, like, just talk to me, bro. Like, that's it, man. Like, you know, ask okay. me a little bit more. Like when someone tells you something, here's a, here's a universal thing you can say. Like, if I just told you something, you can say, man, I, I totally understand. Like, tell me a little bit more about that. Like, tell me a little bit more. Mm -hmm. like your job is just to sit back and like let me talk and just throw all my feelings out to you right mm -hmm. so you do, you're doing less talking and you're just saying hey tell me more man yeah no i, I agree like yeah you know like what do you think you know like let me open up to you all right so dewey thanks for calling man um yeah i just don't know man the market's like I've, i'm noticing the prices are going back up it seems like the market's getting competitive again and <laughs> I don't, I don't want to go out there and get like outbidded. I'm just not sure if it's a good time. 
Yeah, Enrique, from what I'm hearing right now, you're, you're worrying about the markets be a price is too high and, and a little bit competitive. Uh, I feel the same way. I mean, a, a lot of time right now, um, people are having this fear that uh, the price is going to continue to uh, increase uh, and the com com the competition is going to be very, very hard. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more of like, what, what, what are you concerning? Yeah, I mean, like my one of my friends was trying to buy a house and I guess he went out last week and he said there was like 10 offers on a home. So I'm like, man, is, did I miss the boat? You know, is am I going to be able to buy something now? Is it going to get all crazy like it was before? I'm just kind of worried, man. I just, I don't, I don't know. Hey, uh, Enrique, you have every right to be worried. I mean, after hearing that, I would feel the same way. Uh, I mean, um, but in terms of that, there's some houses out there that is not competitive. Maybe that your friend is looking in a location where it's hot. So uh, let me reassure you. So uh, why don't we do this? You know, a lot of time uh, we worry because we actually not there um, to actually physically um, looking at the competition. Um, but instead, I would rather have us sit down. Uh, we look over each of individual home seeing how long that home been in the market and seeing if there's a deal that we can be made. Uh, does that sound fair? Yeah. I mean, is there still deals out there you're, you're saying? Uh, yeah, definitely. There's a new home in the market from the past seven days. I'm seeing 70, 71 home new inventory in the market. And a lot of time, more inventory, meaning more opportunity for you, Enrique. So uh, instead of, you know, instead of, pay attention to your friend. How about we together, we go look at home, seeing the competition, at least me and you will be more in the, uh, me and you are able to see it firsthand comparing to listening to other people's story. Um, does that sound fair? Yeah, that sounds fair. That makes, that makes sense. You know, cause I, he's looking in an area where like, it's like in Cupertino where the schools are crazy and, right. are, are, and the prices are really high. I'm not looking in that area. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it would be different. Right, right. Of course. Uh, in San Jose, there's so many locations. There's location that is hot and location that is not hot. Um, but it's a good thing that we sit down together. We go over what's on the market on the MOS. And then we can take a look at which home is hot and which home is not hot. At least you can see it firsthand in, uh, on a computer uh, and which, which home that makes sense for you. Perfect. All right, cool. All right, let's stop right there. Let's give it up for Dewey. Um, Teddy, what did you notice from the first time Dewey was doing it to the last time? He's more confident. He, he's coming out of curiosity. He's asking you questions. Okay. Did you feel Dewey was the second time around, this last time around, was he really, was he concerned with like how I felt or was he just trying to close the deal? What, how did how did you feel? Um, I, I felt like he was concerned. Yeah. So you see Dewey, like what I want to point out guys is when you just take off the salesperson hat and just say like, man, like I totally understand. Like, yeah, like tell me more, right? Like, you know, this is why maybe we should sit down like, let's actually look at your situation and let's see what makes sense for you. Right. Cause then, then there's no pressure you're putting on me. Right. It's more like, all right, we could figure this out together. And that's what I felt from you, Dewey. I felt the second time around, you were really just trying to help me out and trying to, trying to help me figure it out, right? And you took your agenda aside. And those are people I want to, I don't want to work with a salesperson who's just trying to sell me something. I want to work with someone who actually has my back, right? And is trying to get me the best situation for me, right? That's what it's all about. All right, let's go. Um, market price is too high. Okay. Let's see. Job and security recession. We already said that waiting for prices to go down. Okay. Not looking anymore. Andre had put not looking anymore. When someone says not looking anymore, like, yeah, I'm not interested anymore. What should you say? Uh, you ask them like, for what, what, like what changed for them? Like, you're like, oh no, like, you know, show them the like understanding and then yeah. be like, so, like, what's changed for you? Like then, like at one point you were looking. Yeah. So that's, that's all it is guys. Whenever, anytime someone says not interested, 
or not looking anymore, that's not, not looking anymore is not the reason people are not looking anymore. Right. Usually when I've been saying that today, though, they will hang up immediately after, like I asked, so, so what changed for you then? And then those gone. Yeah. So, and that's the thing is sometimes you're going to get that. Sometimes you're going to get the people, maybe they, maybe they already bought a home and, and they're still getting called by a bunch of realtors. So their automatic answer is no, not interested in just hanging up because maybe they already bought a home. So your job is to do a, uh, when you have a quick second, something you can do is like a pattern interrupt right? A pattern interrupt is where like you say something that is like a little out of, you know, out of place or uh, like if you said not interested anymore, I'd say like, oh man, like did I catch you at the wrong time? And like I would, I would do something that just totally like got their attention, right? Uh, or I would say like, so this role play this. So tell me you're not interested anymore. Uh, right. I am currently not looking anymore. <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm sorry. Am I like the tenth realtor that called you today? The twenty seventh. Twenty seventh, man. Like, I'm sorry about that. On behalf of realtors, I apologize. I got to work with all those guys. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, Andre. But at one point, you were like shopping online, right? So I just want to update my notes. Like, did something change? You buy a house, or you just you just gave up on it, or what happened? Um. Yeah. You know, uh, times are tough right now. The economy I might lose my job. Oh man. Hey, I'm totally sorry to hear that, man. Like, hopefully I didn't bother you today. Um, do you think it'd be like, if things get better for you, you think you might look into this again at some point in the future? Yeah, it's a possibility. I just, okay. I, I don't feel like right now is a good time for me. Okay. So it's just the finances are kind of up in the air right now. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Don't know where I'll be tomorrow. God, hey, hey, that's, that's a tough place to be, man. I hope it all works out for you. Um, why don't I do this? Why don't I follow up with you in a few months and just check in on you? Is that cool? Yeah, that sounds great. All right, sounds good. Have a good day, man. Click. All right, so you see, what did I do? Break that down for me, Francisco. Uh, not Francisco, Andre. What did I do? I mean, you showed that you actually do care, that you're understanding of, like, where I'm at with my life. And then you basically acknowledged that and accepted it and showed them that you do care. So, you, you know, maybe in the future when I might be more stable, you're setting up that opportunity to be, like, a person that they can respect. There you go, right? Because I have a like right as of right there they, there seemed like there was nothing there so my only option right now is to just like try to follow up see if there's a follow-up opportunity because you're going to run into people where it's just like no i'm not interested no more right and that when anytime someone says that that's a default answer that just means they're trying to hurry up and get off the phone hmm. so how did i interrupt the pattern right there Oh, you, you made the joke about uh, the realtors be like, I must be the 13th one or the, the, what, right. the nth number or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I kept them on, uh, Jomo said I kept the lead on longer on the phone. And then I was able to eventually see what changed. Because sometimes it can come off a little rude. Like, think about this. If I'm calling a stranger asking you if you want to buy a million dollar home and you're like, I'm not interested no more. And I'm like, well, what changed? You were trying to buy it one time. What changed? Like that also can sound a little like arrogant and like, like, who are you like to be questioning me on what changed? Right. It can sound like that sometimes because you haven't gotten permission yet to ask me that question. So that's why I'm not going to ask that question first. I'm going to try to quickly like get the guard to come down and then I'll ask that question later. Does that make sense? So there's a difference between like not interested. Oh, well, what changed? Well, it's like, well, who the hell are you to be asking me what changed, bro? Like this is, this, that's personal, right? Like you don't know what I'm going. I don't know you. But if I'm like not interested, oh man, I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, like, I'm sorry. Like, uh, are you getting a bunch of realtors to call you, right? Yeah, actually, I am getting a bunch of realtors called. Hey, I totally apologize, man. Like, I, honestly, I was just calling to follow up. I see you at one point. You were looking and um, you said you're not interested. Did something change? You know, is, is there anything new with your situation? So see, now at that point, I'm sounding more genuine. And I already got, like, the guard to come down a little bit. And now I can get permission to ask that question. You see what I'm saying? Definitely. So let's try that right now. So ring, ring, ring. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not interested, man. 
Hey man, I, I totally get it. I'm probably like the 20th uh, real estate agent trying to reach out to you about uh, your interest previously. Um, yeah, but, you know, yeah, yeah. You guys keep calling all day, every day, man. It's kind yeah, of yeah. I, I get it. You know, I just wanted to do my due diligence, um, so I thought I'd follow up and uh, just ask you what changed then. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just not gonna buy, man. It's just not a good time right now. I'm going through a divorce, and um, I, I'm not gonna do anything right now. I mean, I totally understand. That seems like a really tough situation you're in, um, you know, financially and emotionally. So uh, I just, I'm glad I checked in. And maybe in some time in the future, I could reach out to you and see if things change for you. Yeah, maybe try me back later in the year. I'm just not, I'm, things are up in the air right now. Well, sounds good. And best of luck. Uh, thanks for your time. All right, click. All right, see? So you got, you got a lot further on that conversation, right? Um, by you just like, saying acknowledging that i'm obviously i'm irritated right if i'm irritated if i'm saying i'm not interested you know and trying to hang up then that means i'm irritated or something's going on so just quickly like hey man i'm sorry did i catch you at a bad time right and then i'll tell you yeah you're like the 20th person that called and then immediately like oh i'm sorry like those damn realtors right <laughs> like be funny bro like don't be afraid to be funny and push the boundaries a little bit right like the way I was able to book so many appointments, guys, when I was, you know, prospecting a lot was because the script was just an outline, but I would always throw my personality into it. I would always crack a joke. I hear a dog in the back, like, hey, I hear your dog. It's like, is it a pit bull? What is it? Like, that dog's going crazy, right? I would say stuff like that. I hear a baby crying, oh, baby, <laughs> right? <laughs> is it a newborn? <laughs> Because now it's like, I didn't just sound like a salesperson. I sound like your cousin calling to say, what's up, right? Um, but that's the thing, guys, is sometimes we're like trying to be so ro robotic and just follow the script. Remember, the script is only an outline. Those are only bullet points. you got to throw your personality in there and you got to instantly try to connect. So if you hear something, right, because you're on the phone a lot, if you hear something, like try to pick up on that. If you hear like a lawnmower in the back, hey, you, you working on your yard, man, that I catch you at a bad time? Like, don't just try to spit your script and you hear like the lawnmower in the back, all right? You got to listen. All right, one more time. Who wants to try the not interested? I want to see someone's personality come out. Got two more minutes. Who's quick? Who thinks they're quick on the phone? Like, and they can like, throw a joke or make me laugh real quick or quickly diffuse like an irritated person. Well, I'm going to pick someone. Angie, I think Angie got it. Let's go, Angie. All right, let's go. All right. Uh, Hello, Enrique. Yeah, who's this? Hey, Enrique, this is Angie. I'm giving you a call today just to follow up. I saw you're looking at homes in San Jose. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah what point you were interested what changed yeah i'm just not interested i i gotta get going what was that i'm sorry i'm just not interested i got i gotta go okay no problem what's a better time to call you okay we'll stop right there so what i want you to do is because what is my tone guys right there do i sound like frustrated irritated short like right it's like you want to go yeah so i need you to quickly interrupt the pattern right by saying something like Oh man, did I catch you at about like say like change your voice, right? Like speak up, say something okay. funny, right? All the are a bunch of realtors bugging you, right? Like say something like that, right? Say something that's gonna that's a good question. That's a good one to say, right? Am I like the 20th realtor that's called you today, man? I'm sorry. Okay. Right? Yeah, Angie. Um, yeah, thanks for calling. I'm not I'm not really interested anymore. Oh man, am I the like 20th realtor to call you this week or what? Yeah, actually you are. Like, you guys just won't stop calling me nonstop. And I keep telling these people I'm not interested. I don't even know how I got on this list. I'm sorry. It's our job to follow up. I feel like we're all just trying to look out for your best interest. Well, while I have you here, sounds like you're pretty busy. Um, what changed when you were in the market? You know, why did you decide to stop? You know what? You're the only person that's asking me that, honestly. Um, everyone seemed like they're trying to sell me something. Um, yeah, I actually got in a really bad car accident. And oh, no. so I, I, I'm on a disability, but I'm, I'm start, I'm at the end of my rehab. I should be going back to work in a few months. And so, um, kind of just put things on hold, you know? Yeah. And, 
Yeah. No, yeah, I hear you. That's really sad. I'm sorry that happened to you. Um, so it sounds like you want to put everything on hold at this moment. Can I go ahead and follow up in a few months when you're back on your feet? Yeah, yeah, literally, I'll be back on my feet right now. I'm gonna, <laughs> uh, I broke both of my legs, you know, I'm barely starting to go on crutches right now. So uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, follow up with me like in three, four months. I, I do definitely want to do something eventually. But just right now, you know, I got to get through this, obviously. Um, yeah, I hear you. Uh, again. So yeah. No problem. You just focus on um, healing then. I'll go ahead and uh, put it in my calendar right now to follow up with you in about three to four months once you're healed. Um, you have a good day, Enrique. Thank you. All right. What was your, what was your name again? Angeline. Okay, Angeline. All right. Thanks, Angeline. All right. Stop right there. Let's give it up. Go, go, go. Let's go. All right. So we went from pissed off person who broke their both of their legs, right? And they're tired of everyone calling and no one really seemed like they even asked like how this guy was doing, right? So now you were able to turn that around, right? You were able to turn that around. How, Angie? How did you turn that around? By being what? Being more personable. Being more personable by being a human. Think about that. Think about that. Just be a human and people will like you. Wow, that's crazy. Huh? <laughs> right? By just being more human. Like, oh man, like are people bugging you, right? Like, obviously I'm irritated for something, you know? So don't be afraid to ask. There are no rules to the game, guys, right? Like sales is all about connecting with people. Don't be afraid to say something funny, be, you know, push the boundaries a little bit. Of course, there's like a script, like a foundation that you're trying to follow, but you have to put your personality into the mix, right? Okay. Yeah. I want to say I booked an appointment yesterday with this guy uh, for Sunday. He's really far out, but um, he has like, he's a first time home buyer and he thought he had to put 25% down for a down payment before he could buy. And so we ended up having a 20 minute conversation about how he wants to have chickens in the backyard. And just because I was being personable on the phone call, I got to get that information out of him. There you go. Right. Perfect example. Good stuff. That's the thing guys is, is so for some of you guys, like it's okay. I got to learn. The, I got to learn the knowledge. I got to learn the scripts. And now the next level is I got to just be myself with everything I've learned, right? I got to go be myself because you guys are all awesome people. You guys all bring something different to the table. You guys are all unique. You guys are all badass individuals that are here today in the Silicon Valley trying to make shit happen, right? So embrace that, right? Make sure people know how awesome you are, right? Be yourself, bring your personality, um, connect with people, be genuine, open up, share things with people, right? Have those genuine conversations on the phone or in person or at the open house or in your buyer consults or your showing appointments. That's how you create that glue, right? Where you build those relationships and people are going to want to work with you because there's a connection there, right? That's the key guys to selling a lot of homes is just really help people and connect with them and lead them to the right path, right? All right, y'all, do me a favor really quick. Um, in Slack, to end this, what's your biggest takeaway today? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just respond to my post. Biggest takeaway from today's training. Hit, hit uh, reply to my post so it stays on that thread. I uh, just posted it in Slack. Just hit, click on that post and hit reply. And then give me your biggest takeaway that you got, whatever, whatever you got that you need to make the adjustment from today's training, right? What's the one thing you learned from today? Oh, empathy and reassurance. Be understanding. Loosen up. Be yourself. Take the script and make it your own. Yep. Always look out for your client's best interests. Seek to understand. Be more curious. Let them talk more. Be yourself and humble up. Using the pattern interrupt tactic. Be yourself. Here we go. 
Make jokes. There you go. Be human, have fun, speak to others the way you speak to family and friends with knowledge in what you do. I love that, Kayla. Use that knowledge, everything you're learning from here, but make it your own and be yourself while you're doing it, right? If something you guys will notice, the these top producers that you see, even the top producers in our office, the top producers on other teams out there, the people who sell a lot of property, you may look at them and think that they're so confident but really what it is, is they're just being themselves most of the time, right? Because you can always be confident when you're yourself. When you're trying to be someone else, it's hard to do that, right? Because you're faking it. So when you just be yourself more, that's the most natural state for you to be, right? You know, so be yourself more and watch like everything will just come together a lot faster. Uh, be human. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to say something funny. Yep. If you're getting people to laugh, guys, on the phone or in person or on your consults or on your showings, like you're doing something right. If they're laughing with you, something's happening, right? There's some magic brewing right there. All right, guys, that's all we got today. Um, hopefully you got some value. Let's make it happen. Let me know if you need anything. See you at the next training, y'all. Let's go.